That snow is very inviting. I'd love to be up there. Mount Arthur. There you go, everybody. This is going to be a very interesting video, so hang about. There'll be quite a lot of stuff in it. The biggest boar weighed in this year at the Rewalker hunting and fishing competition was a stonking 215 pounds, 8. Chance Crichton, one of my patrons, caught that. Mate, oh, I'm shaking your hand here over the internet because I talked to Simon this morning. He told me it took you over six hours to drag it out. I don't even know how the hell you did it. And looking at the toes on it, I had a look at it. It's a pig that's roamed a long way. So we're going to go straight into that boar now and show you guys what it really looked like. And well done, mate. This pig in front of me has got to be over 200 pounds. I'll pan around and show you. Look at the size of that. It is bloody massive. That's a beauty. Holy shit, look at the tusks on it. You can tell this boar has roamed a lot by his round toe in the front. Actually not big feet for a for a big pig. You look at that and you go, it's a hundred pound, but it's a hell of a lot bigger than that. Just in good condition. 98 kilo. That is a big pig. Jesus, it's big. Bloody massive. Huge. You can see these guys that have caught this have had to drag it out of the bush for a long time just to get out. They've done the hard yards. Some quite nice looking balls here. That's not a baddie. Probably not from around here. It's probably from down south. Probably guessing. Look at the fangs on this guy here. Not a big pig, but look at the choppers on this guy. Holy shit. Dog killers. So, to fill you in what would be, have been going on, was the kids would have been, had their possum throwing competition here, there'd be the pig carry on the back, all those fun games that we enjoy at our competitions, but this year my dogs were chasing a pig, we were trying to get it, and we thought we had it, and we ended up going for bloody miles and getting here too late, and that's just the nature of pig hunting, so sorry I can't bring you the whole competition I would have liked to, but it just wasn't possible. We've got prize giving now. Who knows, we might win a spot prize, but I doubt it. And the average deer weight, sponsored by ITN, and your prizes are Nikita Fritz Freezer, Kyle Griffin. Sweet prize. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! They support our whole community, and that's really, really important. But the last thing is, to run a good event like this takes one man to be the leader. And I've come here for many years, and Simon has done an absolute fantastic job. He's bringing people up in the middle of the night, he's ringing them up in the day, he is spending hours and hours and hours to make this work. So guys, I'd like you to put your hands together for Simon Fowler. Yeah, really. really thank you for Woo. what he's done for us our community and bringing people together. Well done Simon, thank you very much. Nice one Simon. Okay guys, it's been a very successful year. I wish you the very best out on the ocean, I wish you the very best in the bush. Stay safe, play safe, and come home. And we'd love to see you again next year with extra people. Simon will wrap up. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks to ITM and all their major sponsors. Um, obviously, it's all come together pretty well. So I let all the ducks out so they could have that green paddock all over there. It just goes for miles. And what do they do? they got to hang around here and make my garden area a bloody mess. Look what you've done. That was a path I used to walk through. What have you done? What have you done in here? Oh, you've been laying some eggs in there. Oh, that's actually good. Oh, happy days. See that place? Your eggs in there. What a fucking mess. Jeez. You messy bastards, eh? Go out the paddock. So now Ducky's the lone duck in here all by herself. You can try and fly out, are you? You want some feed? Yeah? Here we go, mate. You don't only socialise with everybody else, you can have your own feed. Tail wagon, she's happy. Get him behind, Pace. Get him behind. Didn't take long for these guys to make a mess. Oh, you're going back in your cage now. Snow on the mountains means it's cold. Bruno's got his blankets. And Pace currently is sleeping inside with me. 
We hunted for two days trying to catch a pig for the competition. Man, we worked hard. This little guy here did over 70 kilometres in just one of the days we hunted. And young Finn, who we took out for the first time, who was 12, he clocked up over 20 kilometres on the hill, but no pork. Patron Bob Brown sent me this in the post and he didn't put the right name on, he put Clay Bob Brown instead of uh, Clay Tall Stories and it sat for over a week in the post, but he posted it so well that it's actually all okay and the plants survive. What I wanna know is, can you plant out passion fruit, this is what they are, at this time of the year, outside of New Zealand, or do they need to go in a glass house? I don't know. I wanna show you what's going on around here. Look at those flashlights. Bit boomy in here. This is the kitchen. I'm gonna hang this today sometime when Arb gets here. Got a great big fridge, gas, and this range hood to suck all the stuff up. So hopefully the painting's gonna be okay because a lot of cooking stuff, it's an oil painting I've done. I did that in 1999. I've just touched it up and I've put a wee place for my knives, a little magnetic place. Whopping big hole in the wall here because we had to get the power in but the splashback will go over that so you won't see it, that's the idea anyway. Hoping to put in a coal burner here, like a little oven one, coal range I guess you call it. Still waiting for ITM to simmer the handles, right now we're just using tape. When I've got all those things finished in the kitchen, I wanna cook up a feed and I wanna make the very first meal for one of my patrons. So, I'm gonna do something like, uh, first we'll put it out there, who would like to come? Uh, so many guys, Scott Wilson, who's been like there from the beginning, uh, Darren H, who's in Australia, he can't come, Josh James, there you go, Josh, you're local, mate, no, you're not, well, you're hokey ticker, or well, where are you now, I'm not sure where you are, bud, but uh, be good to have Josh for my first meal, but anybody who's a patron uh, who thinks they could make it, uh, Ricky Brown would be another good one, so that's the idea, I'd like to cook a feed for one patron, or even a couple who can make it there, the very first meal but we're still a wee way off getting that fixed up let us know in about two hours a truck is arriving with a mezzanine floor cabin for this here so mount arthur's there and this hut this mezzanine floor hut that's going in here today it's been dropped off by a lift and shift that has been totally paid for by my patrons and that is for young daniel all he's got to do is two hours a day work he gets sundays off and he also gets the days off he goes hunting with me so on the days he's not hunting or resting on a sabbath he gets his place to stay, his power's paid for, his firewood, his meat, his eggs, his vegetables. All he's got to do is a little bit of work in the garden here and a work around here. That's a pretty good deal. Currently he's staying in there. Some of you ask how Bruno's going. He's going really well. He's got this blanket here that Anna Marie sent for him and it's been keeping him really good. There's something in it which gets the blood going. I don't know how it works but it's working because the old boy is going well. Arb's going to be here very shortly to help with some stuff, but I wanted to show you guys where I've been smoking the tar meat. I made an outdoor bush smoker here on the farm, just because I like being in the native bush and it really works well in this environment. That's the tree hut behind me. That is also another place for young guys to stay. I want to show you what I did, and I'm going to punch through now, go forward to that little video. I've made a whole video for it, so we'll follow on with that. But I just want to show you where I put it so you know where it is on the farm, just down there. There it is, simple tripod, cut the ground out. I actually did it with something I found. I did it, I was actually gonna film the whole thing, but I thought, oh no, I'll cut it out. I actually cut it out the ground with that. That's a tool, that's a tool I found. And basically all I did was make a fire, and for five hours, I hung my tar meat over that. We're still chewing on it, we've still got some more to cook. By God, that tastes good. We put the tar meat into strips, put some chili on it, some Cajun seasoning, Smashed it over that there, a bit of salt. Five hours later, good chomping and chewing. And I'll be making some more of that. So that video will follow now. Enjoy. Wet. Yeah, dry. Ish.
so the wind is coming from this way and these leaves we're putting up this uh, leaf litter also is keeping the wind off it that enables our smoke to go straight up where we want it rather than blowing to the side that's where we're going to put our meat you smell that meat boy can you eh yeah Ideally you want to have it so you can just have your hand there. I've been marinating this meat for two days with Cajun seasoning and also chilli and salt. Tar meat, jerky now. Dude. It's chewy, but it's good. Oh, good. Mm. Does that make your mouth water looking at that? Oh, yeah, bro. Okay, I'll sure. we'll try that piece, mate. A bit chill on that. Jerky. Yeah, that's way better than Jack Link's mm. type bar. Yeah? Mm hmm. That's bull tar. Yeah. You ever had it before? No, I haven't. Fuck, it's good. It's good, isn't it? It's got the same consistency as bull tongue, but a lot more flavour. Got a lot of flavour, eh? Mm. Mm. A lot fattier, actually, as well, surprisingly. It's good, eh? Yeah. It's got a wee bit of pepper. Mm. It's got salt. It's got Cajun seasoning. And I put it two days in that there just to absorb it. Mm. And then I gave it five and a half hours with native kanuka, smoked with kanuka. Yeah, she's good, isn't it? Yeah, that Cajun season really, like, pulls through as well. Mm. Yeah. So good, man. I'm pleased you enjoyed it. That went pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take some hunting with us next time. You can tell it's good, man. Yeah, awesome. Loads and loads of tantalised fence posts. Jamie from Fence Works. He's going to do the whole area. But right now, it's so wet underfoot. He come out and he drove a couple of posts in the ground, but he said, mate, I'm going to stuff your paddocks. We'll hold off for six weeks. Thanks, Jamie. I really appreciate looking after my paddocks. So the tractor's around here. I'll show you. It's an absolute bloody ripper to do the job. And that's what he's driving the posts in the ground with. But yeah, just too wet. So he'll be coming down when things dry a bit and smacking a few posts in. I've set all the ducks free because it just got too muddy in here. It's way too muddy. Oh, you're laying an egg in there, mate, are you? Bloody good. We had so much rain, it just made it impossible. Pace, get up. Made it impossible. We're going for a ride, buddy. Jump in. Get in the back. Pace, that's not the back. Get in the back. There you go. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to smack you in the nose. They have just started to lay eggs again now. Although I found that they were laying eggs, but I wasn't getting any because I'd given uh, Daniel, who's staying with us, the job to collect them, but he was only collecting the odd egg that came out on the ground, but didn't actually look in the box. And the other day, well, you'll see what happened because I'll bring you that video when I show you what's going on with the garden. It's kind of funny, but not funny, if you know what I mean. I want to show you the uh, hay bales. Sorry, the baleage bales where they once were and what's going on down there because we've now sold them all thanks to Graham Tristan. He's actually sold the whole lot. Man, she's wet here. Shit. Very wet. Gonna need four wheel drive to get out of this paddock. Surprise these guys didn't actually get their machine stuck. Thing is, how are we gonna fix the paddock up now? What are we gonna do to fix that up? It's a bit rooted. I mean, when it dries out, it's gonna be like, you won't even be able to put a mower over it, will you? Look how deep it is. It's like little rivers everywhere. Well, that's the machine, a bloody beauty. Soft loader on the front. It's a cracker, isn't it? Man, look at that cab. I'd hate to think of the money you got to tie up to own something like that, eh? If you haven't almost run the thing every day to pay for itself. So we've got a few left. We're going to keep probably about seven for ourselves because I want to get some cars in here. Can never have too much of this stuff. I was really lucky because uh, Graham, he did a lose and then he sold them for me. And I got 80 fuck. I was going to say 80 fuck. That was a bit slip of the tongue. I got 85 bucks, not 80 fucks. <laughs> I wish. I got 85 bucks for each one. So that money is going towards paying for the fence that uh, Jamie's doing. It won't cover it all, 
but Jamie's given me a really good price. He was competitive with everybody else. Actually, everybody was pretty much the same price. And he's going to do the whole lot with netting so we can actually keep dogs in here as well. So hopefully that'll start in maybe another six weeks when things dry out. It's good to get them all gone too because as you can see, having them on the ground here, it just kills all the grass. I mean, it's fucked, it's gone. But we're going to have a fence along there anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm pretty excited about having some livestock in here, I can tell you. I'd rather have a few sheep and a few cattle than having to run machinery over all the time and harvest it. Even though there's reasonably good money to be made out of selling baleage or hay, but I'd rather have some livestock in here. And I think livestock are really much better for the paddock too. They keep everything sort of turning over. They add a natural manure to it. They chomp it right down. So to begin with, I'll probably put some uh, wiener calves in here rather than just put uh, like new ones in raising them myself I haven't got the time to raise them you need to have a calf shelter which I'll probably put in anyway but probably easier for me just to buy wiener calves that have been dehorned and had their what stuff done to them with a vet that's the plan anyway but first of all before we put anything we need a fence so Bruno's been wandering out he got off his rope and across over there to construct and they sent me a, a photo from their security from where he'd gone in there hey pace I just can't have Pace or Bruno wandering. So Pace says to me all the time, he wandered a while ago and Darren the ranger brought him back. But Bruno has crossed that road and I think he's done it more than once. And that's like, that's causing me a lot of anxiety because if he gets hit by a car, I'd hate that to happen. I'd feel sorry for the people in the car too because it would destroy their car. He's close to 70 kilogram of, of dog. So he's now on a rope, so he won't do that anymore. He's looking out for rabbits the whole way. Where's a rabbit? We're gonna go. We're always like ADHD, this dog, all the time, never stops. At this stage of the video, I want to jump through and just show you what we've been doing with the garden the last couple of uh, weeks. What's been happening there? We just put an edge right along here, a retaining wall, I guess you could say. A bit of timber that Arp had off another job. Put some pegs in here. Just so our garden, which is on a slight angle, has an edge. Does anybody remember that song? I remember when I was a kid. I met a pretty little hen, I kissed her once, and I kissed her again. I said, won't you be my wife? She replied, I'll be yours and I'll be true, and I'll have lots of eggs for you. I'll be yours for the rest of your life. That was a cool song when I was a kid. These guys here, there's no roosters here at all, so we don't do any mating, but I am going to get a red one for spring, so if anybody knows anyone that has them, I want a really nice stud, and what I'll do is I'll put him over all the chickens, and then I'll uh, chop his head off and eat him. Because around here, we eat what we have. The chickens aren't laying eggs, they get eaten. As the old story goes, we got livestock, you got dead stock. Some of you have said that uh, hay is better than sawdust. The thing about sawdust is that I put the stuff on the garden, so it goes into my bucket. And if there's a lot of hay in there that's got seed, then you end up with stuff growing in your garden that seeds. So this is actually better for compost. We have local sawmills around where we can get untreated sawdust. If you can't get it from your actual sawmill, generally garden centres, or if you're in New Zealand, CRT normally has uh, bags of it, and it's not too dear, and it goes a long way. That's the reason that I use that instead of hay plus i like to use hay to feed my sheep look at these ducks over here loving being outdoors they're in our little citrus grove and it's really good to have them because ducks eat slugs chickens don't but they find the slugs and they love them and they find them too they get that flat beak in the grass and they eat them up and turn them back into eggs and duck meat that's poo you don't want that mate this bucket here is a couple of weeks old it's broken down a bit gonna throw it in here it's really starting to break down already, look at that. We're going to add this morning's lot onto it. There we go, into the mix, a bit dry. Now I'm not sure, but I reckon that could be tiger worms. There's something red already in there. It's got that striped look about it, look, already breaking it down. See that? I'm pretty sure it's a tiger worm. It's only a couple of weeks old, and it's full of them. Great. I go to our local cafe, and I get all their coffee grounds. They leave them in these black bags outside. The tailgate of the truck is such a valuable commodity. It's a workbench, it's a place to sit and have your lunch, it's a place for dogs to come up, eh, Pace? Good boy. 
there's a good boy here. It's a place to do something like this. Good dog. You think you're helping, do you? Hey. Coffee's actually good for lots of things, coffee greens. What are you doing up there, Pace? Hey, Bruno. Come and see what's going on, mate, have you? Hey. Good boy. You can't do that, fella. You get a caffeine high off that. Look at this stuff. It's actually really good when it breaks down the soil, and the worms seem to really like it too. Give it a bit of a mix up in here. This is where I feed the dogs their raw eggs. And every couple of weeks, just gather the shells. Sometimes I actually crush the shells up properly, and other times I don't. And when I don't, I take these shells later on and I use them for the garden. Here's our fireplace in the house truck, and as you can see, there's bones that have been burnt because we don't feed cooked bones to our dogs, and they start to break down in the fire, which is good because it's already begun to break down the soil, so we can use that. So this here goes into the mix, and this is actually also one of Daniel's jobs on the farm, but he's done some this morning, but he hasn't done it all, so I'm going to take the rest out now. Fireplace clean, and oh, we've got about half a bucket. this through. These duck eggs, we were hoping a duck would sit on them, but they've been there now for four weeks, and I'm starting to think we need to do a float test and just make sure that they haven't gone rotten because nothing's sitting on them. Hey, mate. Oh, jeez. Didn't know that one there. Okay. Some of these have semi floated and some haven't. That one there's semi floating. So, I think we're just gonna say that that's all compost. So Daniel's job is, with the chickens, is to collect eggs and to clean up. And so I've just taken all the eggs out of here that are about six weeks worth. And I've also cleaned that up. There they are, they're rotten. So you did know that was your job, eh? Yeah, yeah. So what happened? I didn't check that one, I don't think, but I, I occasionally would check those, but. Well, those, those there, we could see them and they were waiting for them to lay, so that was all right, but that one there was, um, that's why I stayed away from those ones for a bit. Yeah, um, but that's the reason why that's, if you're wondering why there's all this, you remember how I told you you've got to clean all the stuff out? Yeah, yeah. Every two days? It's about six weeks of stuff. Yeah, so we're going to put that into the garden and I'm going to come over, I'm going to dedicate this wheelbarrow. I've also cleaned the fireplace out because that, there's the ash. That's that's also another of your jobs, but there was, you had done that you said? I said I did a bit of like half of it because um, I kind of filled the top layer of that. I was like, mm, I should probably um, spread it to the other gardens if necessary because yeah. there was enough for that. Yeah, just take the whole layer out when you clean it. And I've also done the chicken house again because it was already building up. I've done the bottom. Yeah. So that, that's every couple of three days so it doesn't build up. That way don't, don't get any uh, disease in there. And I couldn't get into one of the eggs because um, one of the chickens were laying, so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. leave it for now. He's got a phobia of chickens. <laughs> Just the one. Just the one. Yeah, is it the white one? Yeah, the white one with the, the spots. The wee tiny one. It's yeah, actually it's the green. It's at like... the bottom of the pecking order, but it actually terrifies Daniel. It's fucking <laughs> There's hilarious. There's something about it, man. It's There's something spooky around. about it, eh? Yeah. I know what that's like, man. I've got certain things too with, with certain animals. There's something about it that's just a bit weird, eh? <laughs> anyway, hey, good job over there, man. I'm going to come over and carry on with that, and I'll I'll check the other eggs over here now. Yeah. But, but thanks, buddy. No worries. My chickens have a pretty big range to going you can see where they've killed all the grass right down there this whole fence there is theirs and what happened is they sleep in there at night and then they go through the hole in the fence up there to the other side and that's the chicken house where we click the eggs that's the automatic feeder down there and they probably go through about 20 kg every 10 days and from that they produce a lot of eggs when I bring my kills home from hunting I throw the heads in there and they pick out all the brains and eyes and bits and pieces so nothing gets wasted Morning ladies, you come say good day, did you? Sheep poo. Morning Creamy. How you going mate? G'day Hoggett, how you going? I'll tell you what would be good mate, and that would be if you could do your poo all in one place. It's just fresh out of your bum now, is it? No, we'll take that. Jeez, I don't like look at this. We all right? We might need to get that uh, trimmed, eh? What do you reckon? Hmm? Couldn't care less. Fresh out of the bum hole. I wish I got that on film. She was actually pooing and I held the bucket and I was going straight in the bucket. That's a first. So Creamy's tame and old Hoggett there's not. Paces look at those pukiko now, aren't you mate? I know what you're doing, you can hear him down there. Nice sheep poop. So now we've got our coffee grains, we've got our broken down poo. 
a little bit of straw in there. I didn't really want too much of this because it does become weeds, seeds in it. That's why I try to keep the hay out. A little bit in there. And we've got our sheep poo, our ash. And of course we'll be adding our old duck eggs to the mix. We'll probably break them on it when we put it out in the garden. We've got the burnt bone, all of that. Man, it smells nice with the coffee. And it's uh, looking really good. The ash has helped dry out a lot of the stuff that was broken down. So Daniel's done this one. He's turned it over this morning. And I'm going to put all of this into here over the layer. And that's going to be ready for planting in springtime. It'll give it a chance to break down. I don't actually look too bad, but we're not going to risk getting salmonella. That's right. Each one is going to get mushed into the ground just like that. Shells and all. You can. Oh, that one's that one's rotten. Okay. No, we made the right choice. That one's rotten as. We definitely made the right choice. One thing too is the worms like to eat all that too. Not for you, Pace. Get out of there, mate. Get out of there. Get out of there, mate. There you go. Leave it, Pace. Not for you. I know you'd like to eat it, mate, but no. Nah. This black bin gets hot in the sun. That's what I want. There's the sun, and there we have the seaweed that's breaking down in it. Boy, and does that stink. There's leeches. I don't know if they're leeches, but some sort of little organism that lives in there that also breaks it down. Hey, Pace, you want to eat that as well, do you, mate? Man, it stinks. So I'm going to give us a stir up. I'm going to take that juice out there and we're going to put that into our mix. There we have it. Ooh. Now we get some nice and shitty duck water out of the pond. This is a job I'm going to get Daniel to dig out at some stage. It's a fun job because it smells like shit. Oh, g'day Daniel, how you going? Not bad, not bad. That's it, Pace. Gonna put one of those in there. Hey, that's it, mate. Interesting that, are you? I think it looks like fun. What am I doing? Well, we're trying to make something we can uh, put the water over the garden. Without it coming out too fast, let's try this. We'll put the duck poop water on first, see how that works. Mm. Might need to pat it down a bit more, eh? Get it in the bottom there. How's that? That's better. And into our seaweed. Mix it up. Oh, yeah, that's better. Now we're talking. The filter system works really well. It just spreads it nicely. You know, the garden. And a good amount. Right. There's our seaweed done and dusted. How wide do you guys reckon that strip is? I'm going to say a uh, metre. I oh, know it's exactly, it's actually over a metre. Okay, so it's a metre. So I'm going to cut strips of this. It's the metre mark there, so we'll just give that a wee nip. Oh, this is that really, really tough. So we've got to do it there. We'll cut our straight line. I use these scissors for everything. I cut through ribs with them. I cut through chicken breast, lamb breast, or at least brisket, you should call it carpet. It goes all right. Reasonably straight for an old blind bugger. Here we have excess and roll out the red carpet for the garden. Done and dusted. Gardening is a lot of work and that strip there to cut it out probably took me close to an hour to be honest by the time I laid it and got it all measured up and cut. You don't realise it. It probably took me another about an hour and a half to two hours to get my mix made up of compost but now I can leave that and in late spring or even springtime I can peel the carpet back turn it over once and it'll be good I might even introduce some worms to break down some of the protein I'll put in the ground and the seaweed mixed up with the ash and the eggs particularly and the chicken poo and the coffee grounds all that stuff can get broken down but that's going to be a really fertile patch 
So farmlands have dropped off the posts and Jamie's unloading them. Is that all the wire, is it? Yeah, there's some netting to come. Yeah, netting uh, to come, yep. Yeah, that's all the wire. Bloody good. He was on the security camera at the building across the road last night. They sent me some footage of him last night. Yeah, Bruno. Yeah, he was across the road while we were at pig hunting the weekend. Got a big photo of him there at 6.38 at night, and we're out hunting, and I come home, he's on his blanket. Oh, he's been a good boy. He's been away all day. <laughs> he's tired. Baby. Yeah, thanks for that, for dropping that off. Appreciate it. So Danny's here. With our new fridge. Um, that blanket on the front right hand side. Very satisfying. They change colour. That, your, your fingernails change colour? Yeah, when I'm cold they go, I think the light purple? No, yeah. dark purple. Okay. Right, that's interesting. Do they also like warn you about people? He's a bit, bit of a dodgy bastard and they change colour there. I wish. <laughs> Man, they do this stuff tight, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. That's what... It's just like a cell phone when you buy it, but it's like 10 times as big and it's even hard to get off. So is this the highlight of your day, mate? Oh, definitely. Ripping cellophane off fridges. Cool tattoo, what's that, mate? Me and my best friend got the same one. Yeah? Yeah. Nice, I haven't seen that one before. Original. Just like skin and a pig, Danny. <laughs> Gotta keep on cheering, mate. Keep on moving when you go out. Shit, they don't muck around, do they? All this covered up. Polystyrene on the inside. Jeez, she's a flash fridge. Look at that. Wow. So all this stuff comes with all this. Is that safe to pull out? Is it alright to take that out? Or? Yep. Oh, yeah. Shit. Jeez. See, they look quite fun. <laughs> what could you do with those? You could for kids to play with, you could paint them or something. Well, they're not holding the shelves up anyway, work that out. <laughs> <laughs> I just went over shelves are intact. Jeez, it's bloody like a, it's like a little, one of those little hotels in Japan, you book the night for 10 bucks. You do naughty stuff, you could sleep inside that, couldn't you? Well, you couldn't and I couldn't, but some Japanese people are pretty small. I don't know if we can say that, but they are, they're small enough, so I think we can say that. It's, it's huge! Do you reckon it looks like a sex hotel? What do you reckon? Have you seen those sex hotels? No, I haven't. You seen those, Danny? No. You, you go for a, a good time, not a long time, when you pay by, pay by the hour. Well, that's really cool. Starting to look like a kitchen now. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks, Nolimi. Good job. Oh, Bruno's barking. It's okay, mate. They're friendlies. Bruno, it's okay. They're friendlies. This is my local shop at Mapur, the Mapur Foursquare, and I come in here because I know they've got these now. Ta da! There's the chunky one, and there's the posse young one. Little dog treats. You could make them yourself, but I'm just gonna six dollars forty nine. It's pretty reasonable for what you get, so I'm gonna actually get some these for the pace. What have we got here, pace? What do we got here, mate? We got uh, we got bills, more bills, and oh, I don't like that. It might be a pine that one. And what's that? Oh, that's the registration, I think. Yeah, it's dog Joe. That's your dog registration. That's come from Tasman District Council. And look at that. Hey, have a smell. Have a smell, mate. Oh, I can smell that. You smell that? He's looking at a dog out the window. That all change. Now you smelled it, haven't you? Ooh, what's that, eh? Ooh, what's that? Ooh. 
Bull tail wagon. They look kind of cool. Oh, look at that. This looks like a little wee um, sausage. Look, the hen is done. How cool is that? Yes, go see those. Yeah, do you want any bite? Hey, what's that? He's dribbling. I think he's got it. He's going to take it in the back and chomp on the back of my seat. No, it's, he's being fussy. He's like, he's a real fussy dog, eh? Like, he just doesn't. There's very little stuff he'll eat. He'll eat a posse um, as dog tucker. You're making a hell of a mess, Pace. It's all crunched up, but is he going to eat up all the bits on the seat or is he just going to leave it? You look that up. It's gone pretty fast. I think he's enjoyed that. No, you're not getting any more. No, 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 no. No, you look the bits up there. No, that's it. Where you go. Where you go. All right, I'll save that for another day. Put that in the glove box where you can't get it. Anyway, uh, that's your. Uh, I don't know why I'm salivating. <laughs> smells like you can eat it. Smells like jerky. Anyway, uh, we'll um, carry on down the road. He's cleaning it up now. He's picking up all little bits. That's good. Reasonably priced for a wee treat for your dog. Yeah, you can still clean up more, mate. Yeah, you can clean up more. Go on, you finish it off. Where you go? Eat up, eat up, eat up. Clean those bits up there. There you go, now you're talking. No, no, go back and clean that up. No, no, you go back and clean it up. Here, eat up that there. Yeah, there's bits there in the seat. So the Land Cruiser's in the way there. Arb's just turned up, and I'm going to give it a wee push forward with this here. Give it a wee push. I'll just get into low box. Hold on. She out, she out of gear? Out of park? She's going. If I can hope the brakes work on that. Yeah, that'd be good. They're right. Lucky the brakes work, eh? <laughs> I was just thinking they won't have any brakes, so you might just carry on down there. We're gonna clear that, yep. Yep! That's good! Minimal damage, a wee bit at the roof, but otherwise fine. Looking good. Oh, Bruno's like, who the hell's this? Just gonna clear the veranda there. It's a hell of a big thing to bloody move, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Too easy. What do you reckon? I'm not reckon anything. I reckon everything I touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do with a probably a coat or something. Maybe that stuff that that Dan gave. Yeah, you. we're, we're going to probably do could it be good even. for that, eh? Yeah, he's going to going to paint it. So it looks like we'll be building a veranda. Yeah. Oh, we'll get it up and yeah. see how it goes. Is this is this enough? The, this here, Ab, the building on this here, no, it? no, it's not enough at all, no, because that's a four by two pearl and on the on its end. Right. So a lot of flop. Right. Should really probably can't really go that far without having outriggers, right. which is a four by two on an edge going back quite a distance. Yeah, right. And with that kind of overhang, nine hundred, yeah, I'd be picking. It probably would have needed to have been a six by two to go back. Oh yeah. Another almost. You have a cut rafter on the end, and then you have a full one further back, and it joins back to that. Yeah, right. So um, oh, I'll we'll... just probably beef it up a bit. Yep. Cool. I think if we do a veranda like we got to, we'll stick a post down the bottom. Yep. And then maybe the smart thing might be to just triangulate it. Yep. And then that'll hold everything together. Yeah, right. It won't blow away. We don't want it to blow yeah, away. Yeah, because a lot of wind here, eh? There is. This is a high wind zone, very high wind zone here. Yeah, yeah. Which is why, you know, I wasn't worried about it sinking. Yeah. That's why you know, I've got the anchor piles there. It's about yeah. keeping it there, you know, so. There's a lot of windage for its light weight. Yeah. It's about two ton, that. Yep. So it's not much weight. No, that's right, considering it's windage. I could use one of those for so loading animals onto my truck so I can lift them up. <laughs> Take it to forestry. You can see why it's a hard hat area, can't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. You've got your hard beanie on, haven't you? Yeah, I have.
It's hanging over my side. Yeah, you want to bring that, these two flush. Yep. Yep. How's that look? Flush at my end, no, or the post. We go down there. Yep. Not. They're giving you wrong measurements, have they? Oh, mate. We're gonna it. Well, probably you'd have to put something along the front, so we will have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it the wrong? Is it the wrong building you got up? I don't know. You tell me. What's well, well, not flush? Is it there? At no, all? no, no. It's wider. Yeah, two point eight by three point seven. It should be safe. It should be. They're all kids. They're all identical. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's giving the wrong plans. Yeah, obviously. What's really sad about it was I cut it down to suit. I actually had overhang on the bearers, so I could have. So if you left it there. If I'd left it there, but you do it all first, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That'd actually uh, look quite good with some outside anyway. Well, yeah. What to do? We kept the end grain of the bearers, yeah, so yeah, we might as well halve it. Okay. Stick down in the middle, then stick that bearer in the middle. Well, that post might necessarily be in a bit like that. No, but what I mean is this, this here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll come out. So I've got nothing here. How much you? Uh, I've got heaps. How much you got? Nothing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much flush. Okay, so the over. The mil. thing is, though, if we do that. It's actually not going to sit properly no, no, because it's going to be both hanging over the ends and it's going to rubble in the middle. So we're going to have to stay with this. And you support this side? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to support that side. Yeah. Yeah, be there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a real fuck up from these guys. Oh, yeah. If it's... you actually got more of that hundy by hundy about them, you put it on that outside. Yeah. Uh oh. That's not looking too fucking flash. I'll have to get the. <laughs> Do you want me to get the Hilux and pull you out, mate? I reckon you take a bit of a run, eh? Just as well I've uh, got a uh, Toyota, not a Ford, eh, bro? The almighty Ranger would have done that. No, the Ranger would have shit itself. That just pissed him, didn't it? 25 ton. Actually, when I bought this, Robert said it was going to have a, a caravan plug, but it's got nothing. So we didn't get that. She's not actually straight either. Bit of a worry, because Arb's foundation is dead straight. A few gaps like this should have been doing better. So this noise that keeps banging is the wind and the paper. Slapping, which should keep you awake at night. We're gonna fix that up. That roof flapping a bit, eh? You can hear it flapping up there. Where's that flapping up? I'm thinking it's the uh, sergeant underneath. Yeah, There's paper underneath. <laughs> this is one step beyond the bugle bat. What do you call those? Spack That's called spack screws. Yep. So they have a registered force. We're allowed to use them to hold posts on verandas for handrails and stuff like that now. Right. When we used to have to use 12 mil bolts before. Right. So they're actually pretty good. The wafer head, big washer head, it's 10 mil. It's like a coach screw, but it's going to go right into that bearer. Yeah, right. And what happens is you see these grooves on the thread, they cut the fibers right. when they go. So they cut the fibers so it doesn't split the timber. Yeah, right. Geez, that was easy. Yep.
Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Arb. Brother. How you going? <laughs> Good. Good. Good to see you, man. Yeah. What a beautiful day. It is, isn't it? Oh, mate. And look at the views. This guy that's going to be living in this this hut we're putting here for him, look at his views. Straight across at Mount Arthur. Yeah. Which, incidentally, used to be my views from my bedroom window there. Used to be my my view from there, but now I see a roof. So it's, actually, I still see it beside it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a wonderful view. But we've got a few issues with it. Got a few things that need to be fixed up, Ab. Yeah, a little bit of upgrading. We had a different size hut from the uh, plan that we got, so I've got some extra bearers. Yep. <clears throat> I see that up there. Got some connections to connect it to the bearers so mm -hmm. it doesn't blow away. And I got some roofing screws as well, because it needs a bit more screws in the roof. Yeah. It's sort of like one in the middle of every sheet. Um, we're in a high wind zone here, so we have to screw every second corrugation at the bottom. Yep. And the top and probably really more like about four in the sheet across the middle so um actually to be honest one in the middle of the sheet doesn't work anyway <laughs> really not in my <laughs> books anyway you know we can hear it flapping in the wind yeah that's what happens yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. so um and then you know, i'm going to have a good close look when i set up my scaffold at that uh ridge cap and maybe i'll just get another one i think with a soft edge so it's flashed properly because it hasn't got a soft edge so yeah yep. with the rain coming from the north and the wind it can actually blow it up absolutely and there's probably paper under it but that's that black tar paper mm -hmm. and that cooks under the tin and it does probably take about 10 years i guess to fall apart completely but then the water starts coming in so yeah if you use the right flashing then the water doesn't come in so mm. we, we start from square one so to speak yeah so that's just i mean you know these are the sort of things i suppose are little cabins that people buy and stick in their backyard and in a sheltered suburban area where you're in a small suburban block and there's yep. houses all around and that doesn't really get the wind to cause a leak potentially so mm. it's probably fine you know i guess yeah, yeah 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 but we're exposed here i'll have a talk to him if we get any more off him i'll just ask him to just make those things a little bit different yeah we can go and have a look at each one individually in yeah. the yard is probably the smart move to do because then i can check before i build the foundation if the plan they're giving me is the right one or the wrong one so they, they yeah. basically gave you the wrong plans for that yeah well i asked them um, the i think there's possibly communication between the yard Oh, yep. the boss in the office or something like that yep. but um yeah i was trying to make sure that i had the right thing so that i could build it right you know and um, i was assured that this was the one that was coming out was this size yeah I, robert in his head knew it wasn't obviously yeah. and he may have told us but i said to him i just want a plan because that's how mm -hmm. i work i don't want someone to tell me something in my head i want it to be written down yeah because then i can just constantly i checked refer it off the, to it i checked it off the same plan myself too yeah. after you'd done it I, yeah. I know you never make mistakes but for my peace of mind it was bothering me yeah and your your bang on the plan <clears throat> your plan was 2.8 wide and the shed's 2.9 wide yeah it's not a biggie but it's a pisser because could have got it right easily enough when i cut it to length because i had a bit of extra we had three meter bearers i remember yeah so i could have cut it to 2.9 wide so mm. you know you could say within hindsight it's a trust thing i've had this discussion with one of my clients but so do i not trust the office and do i actually go out to the yard and measure it and measure it you mm. know? and then um to be honest i would do i would have run my bearers the opposite direction had i done this because all the joists run across here yeah and then i got a boundary joist in the end and a double bear in the middle well then i probably would have actually just run my bearers that way right one in the middle and one each side mm. it's, it's six or one half a dozen the other yeah know, the way we would have done it it would have had to have been a longer bearer mm. but there would have only been three of them and there's four shorter ones so but it just would have been if i'd looked underneath it i would have gone oh no actually i'll do it that way because yep. i reckon it will support everything just that little bit better you yeah know? i mean it still does it this way but what happens is we have four by twos running across unsupported yeah between one four by two on the edge which is supported when in right. actual fact if we'd had the bearers under that way there would have been more general support all around yeah particularly i don't think it's an issue with sagging or anything but i'm just saying from my point of view yeah if i'd looked underneath i'd go oh no i'll run the bearers that way mm -hmm. i would have drawn myself up a plan yep 2.9 meters wide 3.7 long and three bearers that way and there would have been four piles and it would have been yep sweet cool so, but it hasn't been lived in because there's no power points in there and that so. well i think they've relined it on the oh, inside. Okay. so right. it was supposed to come with power points so i don't know yeah. why it hasn't he asked me uh what side i wanted the caravan plug and i can see there's a bit of wire hanging out there but yeah. it sure as hell got no plug young fella was going to stay in it last night and i said well no you've got no power point so we'll get that sorted out yeah It'll just be
I'm drilling it because it's Douglas and because I've got to screw every two corrugations there's a risk if I don't put a bit of a pilot hole in that it's going to split the purlin Yeah, she's not secure. Generally, if you're building a building like this, would you not already put those nails in their arbor or not? Uh, well, I would, and you know, you might end up using 50 more screws. Like, is that the reason the roof was flapping? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. When I held it down up here, yeah, then the paper wasn't ah, resonating. Okay, so, yeah. That'll stop that. They've actually nailed it in the troughs even here, haven't they? I'm going at the top there. Oh, the top, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Those three in a row there. Oh, the trough. Yeah. So what are you going to do to fix that up? Well, I think I'm going to have to put another flashing on. Right. About 200, so... Yeah, because wind would drive water up there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'll have to put a proper flashing, yeah. a ridge cap flashing with a soft edge on it. Yeah. And then that also gets screwed off every second corrugation yeah. as well. All right, bro. Well, I'll let you carry on. Yep. Good work. It's windy up here, eh? It is a bit. Is yeah. A bit. Yeah. You got a plane right above your head there. You see it? You got a bird and we got a plane. Oh, <laughs> where's Superman? Well, he's dressed in red arms. That's right. Who would that be? Dang Nabbit. <laughs> Dang nabbit. See you later, mate. See ya. Daniel's just come home. I wonder how excited he is to see his new house. What do you reckon? Hey? Hasn't got the balcony yet still. They didn't uh, pick it up. It's cool, eh? I mean, look at it, man. You're looking over the mountains. Yeah. It's wicked, eh? It's gorgeous. It's double glaze. It's got heaps of room upstairs. It's a up the yeah, man. It's double glaze. Jump up and have a look. Yeah, this is, a, this is double glazed, eh? So this is not fixed in here, but you've got plenty of room up there. Here's the, uh, like this window here, this is... Yeah. There's your view out there, look to Mount Arthur. <laughs> Straight out there, cool as that, eh? That's awesome, bro. Yeah, man, it's wicked, eh? Yeah, it is warm once you get in here, that double glaze is different. Yeah, nice. it's going to be way warmer than the caravan. Yep, so you'll need to paint it on the outside. Um, you can smell all the, the timber, eh? Smells good, bro. Yep. Yeah. Just be careful, it's just sitting there, it's not nailed, I only just pop it up. You've got heaps of space, eh, for your, for your bed. Fucking eh. You've got a window up there. And if you take a woman back, get a little bit of room for wrestling. Yep. Yeah, I could have gone for the uh, large queen, I think. Yeah, you could have, but you also, you want to have some room beside you for stuff. You don't yeah. want to just put a bed going to the end, and your queen would have come up to about here, so. You also have other stuff up there other than just your bed. Even if I have to get a gun safe later as well. Well, that's the thing too, yeah. yeah. So you have your fireplace down here. I thought they were going to um, wire the whole thing with plugs, and it's, it hasn't got the. He told me he was going to have um, ready to plug in, so right. maybe they're going to still do that. But uh, these are just like not finished. Yeah. He told me it's finished, so it should have a caravan plug, so we've got no power here. I'll talk to him tomorrow about that. Mm -hmm. He can fix that up. Giving me goosebumps, man. So that's my uh, big vlog for the day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Watch the space as we uh, make Daniel's home into a better home. It's got a fireplace to put in yet and a veranda. We haven't got a veranda yet. We've got to pick that up and get the wiring done and it should be tickety boo. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. And we'll see you in the next video. See you later. Well, pace down. You think he's going to come up? No, you think he's going to come up, mate? You think you want to come up, pace, eh? Yeah?